acknowledge that we are gathered on the, uh, the territory of the uh, Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish peoples. I'm Mike Farnworth, Minister of Public Safety and the Solicitor General. Off the top, I want to speak about some of the positive things we're seeing in the face of this pandemic. Virtually or from a safe distance, friends and families are coming together, celebrating Easter, birthdays, finding new ways to connect. The messages and signs of support for our frontline health workers fill our neighborhoods. The applause fills the air each night. The cooperation between parties of all stripes from all levels of government has been extraordinary. After all, we're working towards the same goal. And I see people being patient, kinder to each other. There is a growing optimism about our future, and we have reason to be optimistic. BC is flattening the curve through social distancing, testing, and border control measures. In short, people following Dr. Henry's directions. These are all things we should be proud of. But there are always those who seek to take advantage of people's fears and those who prey on the collective anxieties of our communities. Instances of secondary reselling of medical supplies, personal protective equipment, and other essentials. We've been fielding complaints through partners at Consumer Protection BC of instances of price gouging for the things that we may require to stay healthy. For example, an elderly immunocompromised consumer paying 10 times the regular price for some N95 masks. Business owners looking to purchase personal protective equipment for their workforces having to pay grossly inflated prices. British Columbians have enough to deal with right now. We need to hold the line to follow the guidance of the public health officer. Right now, we need to worry about our collective health. That's why, effective immediately, the province is enabling police to issue $2,000 violation tickets for these shameful practices. For price gouging and the reselling of medical supplies and other essential goods during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The province is also calling upon enforcement staff from local government and provincial ministries to support enforcement by issuing these tickets for the duration of the current state of emergency for the COVID-19 pandemic. This includes municipal bylaw officers, liquor and cannabis inspectors, gaming inspectors, conservation officers, park rangers, natural resource officers, community safety officers, and commercial vehicle safety officials and sheriffs. These measures are in concert with the federal government's April 14th announcement, which allows local and provincial police forces to issue tickets to returning travelers who do not comply with the requirement to self-isolate for 14 days under the federal quarantine act. We are also engaging Consumer Protection BC as a foundational partner in the province's response to price gouging. Consumer Protection BC will be the first and main point of contact for all price gouging of essential goods and supplies, and they will ensure those complaints are resolved appropriately in coordination with the police and other enforcement officers. More information on this is available at consumerprotectionbc.ca. I know many of you have expressed concerns over keeping your shelf stocked, concerns over the worst segments of society taking advantage of the most vulnerable, in the past month, many of us have heard cases of price gouging or someone selling essential supplies illegally. I can assure you, we will not allow these practices continue. We need to work together to keep society running. We need to ensure that all public health orders and my orders issued on the Emergency Program Act are followed. Standing together, we will and can make a real difference that will get us through this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. And before we start taking questions, a gentle reminder to the media, please press star 1 to line up for questions. Media will be limited to one question only. And please make sure that your handsets are unmuted. You will not be heard till we call out your name. We begin with Melanie Nagy, CTV National News. Melanie, go ahead, please. Hi, Minister. Thank you for the announcement regarding um, that uh switch in and beefing up that enforcement. I want to ask you about a different type of enforcement. Um, back to the situation of patrolling physical distancing on our public spaces. Um, again, as soon as the sun came out last 
last night, not even um, a day after Bonnie Henry talked about us still having to hold the line. We had people, crowds at the beach, while some were doing their best to physical distance, there was obvious um, groupings of people. There are more than um, more than 5,000 warnings have been issued to people, issued to people on physical warnings, uh, physical distancing. Is it not time now that uh, perhaps we start ticketing and beefing up the um, enforcement in this area to keep people safe? Um, what I can tell you is, is that uh, by and large, most people uh, in British Columbia are following uh, the directions when it comes to uh, social distancing. Uh, in many communities, you're seeing um, uh, local officials out reminding people uh, about this, uh, and you're seeing it in the results that we have seen in the flattening of the curve in BC. Uh, any changes to, to, the, uh, to the measures uh, regarding social distancing uh, will come from uh, discussions with the, uh, the provincial uh, health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry. Uh, and right now, um, you know, most people are following it. There are always those who won't. Um, and uh, what we will continue to do is to drive home the message that uh, people must uh, stand, um, you know, unless they're living uh, with that individual, um, uh, two meters or six feet, six feet apart. Thank you. The next question is from Juan Palmer, Vancouver Sun. Go ahead, please. Good day, Minister. Um, I've seen, I, I know when you uh, proclaimed your emergency powers, you set in motion uh, to monitor supply chains for other things and gave yourself power to intervene there. I've seen successive stories now of concern about supplies of pharmaceuticals, of agriculture products because of shortage of temporary foreign workers and of meat because of problems in the processing plants. Are you getting periodic updates on those supply chains and do you have any concerns at this point that might lead you to have to intervene there? Um, yeah, we are getting uh, regular uh, updates uh, on the uh, supply chains as they relate to, uh, to various commodities that uh, people uh, rely on. I can tell you in the case of uh, temporary foreign workers to ensure that uh, agricultural products, uh, uh, the farmers in the fields have the ability to, uh, to grow, plant and uh, to harvest the crops that we rely on, that plans are already in place so that when temporary foreign workers come into, uh, into uh, Canada, um, they have to uh, self-quarantine or they have to be quarantined for 14 days uh, to make sure they're he that they are healthy, that the farmers have proper, uh, proper uh, plans in place uh, dealing, uh, if, if necessary, to, uh, to deal with, uh, with uh, accommodation around uh, temporary foreign workers to ensure that, that proper standards are being maintained. Uh, in terms of the food supply, uh, we are regularly updated and at this point uh, we're not seeing anything that causes us uh, uh, concern uh, around, uh, around the products that uh, people rely on, uh, but we are preparing and, uh, you know, plans um, in case uh, situations change uh, depending on the, on the nature of the product. Thank you. Craig McCulloch, KMKX Radio, go ahead please. Craig? Moving on, we'll take the next question from Lisa Cardasco, CHNY. Go ahead, please. Moving on, uh, the next question is from Braden Dupuis, Peak News. There might be a technical uh, hitch. Thank you. Sorry for the delay. We have Lisa Cordasco. Please go ahead. Good morning, Minister. Thank you. I hope you can hear me now. Um, who do you suspect is behind this reselling of medical supplies? Do you uh, suspect it is an organization or organized crime? Or do you think this is really a case of individuals taking advantage? Um, I think by and large it's probably uh, uh, individuals uh, seeking to take advantage uh, of a situation. 
Um, we've seen a number of examples in the media of people being busted uh, for, for reselling uh, product online. We know that whenever there's a, uh, a situation like this, there will be those who want to prey uh, on, uh, on people's fears and the most vulnerable in our society. And that's what these measures are designed to. It doesn't matter whether it's organized crime or individuals uh, trying to take advantage of something. Uh, these measures are intended to deal with the, with the, with the full range of, who, of whoever uh, is engaged in these shameful activities. Thank you. The next question is from Craig McCullough, KMKX Radio. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead, Craig. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, what are your thoughts on the extension of the U.S.-Canada border being closed? Uh, there's been a potential mention that the Washington State B.C. border could open up first. And what type of contact uh, have you, Mr. Farnworth, had with your colleagues or counterparts in Washington State or other cabinet officials had with uh, regional American officials? Uh, well, first off, uh, when it comes to the opening of the border, that is something that is decided by the, uh, the federal government. Uh, and the fact that uh, it's been extended for 30 days, uh, I, th I think, is, uh, you know, has the full support of the, uh, the province of British Columbia. Um, we are in BC in regular contact, and I am in regular contact with my uh, federal colleague, the Minister of Public Safety, Bill Blair. Uh, the, uh, the Premier is in regular contact with the Prime Minister, uh, and, um, uh, and that's where that decision around the, the border is made, is uh, by the federal government. Thank you. The next question is from Braden, Peak News. Thank you, Minister. Uh, we do have some locals here in Whistler who are frustrated seeing people visiting the community, and I know there were some uh, pictures so, uh, circulating on social media of a big bus full of people, a big tour group coming up here and getting off together. Uh, what's the response to that? Is there any way to enforce against that kind of thing? Uh, well, first off, there are now, as you know, uh, controls at uh, the, the, uh, the border. Um, anyone coming into, uh, into Canada, uh, either internationally, and that includes the United States, is now required to, uh, to be self-quarantined uh, for 14 days. Uh, and that means having a, a proper plan uh, in place. And that enforcement at the border has been working extremely well. Uh, we have uh, the majority of people, in fact, do have a self-isolation plan and a plan in place for quarantine. Uh, and those that don't are taken to a, to a, to a hotel, um, an accommodation where they will have to quarantine for 14 days. And there's been about 110 people uh, so far that, that, have, that have, have had to undergo that. Um, in terms of people within the province, again, it comes down to following the orders uh, and the directions of the provincial health officer, Dr. Bonnie Henry, which is to avoid uh, unnecessary travel, to stay close to home. And by and large, most people are doing that. Um, and we will continue to, uh, to, monitor, the, uh, to monitor that and obviously work uh, with the, uh, the provincial health officer uh, if uh, circumstances uh, require a change in, in measures that are in place. The next question is from Chad Parson, CBC. Thanks, Mr. Farmer, for taking the questions. Um, can you run through exactly what would happen if somebody uh, witnesses, sees, experiences, you know, this uh, gouging of products? Uh, who do they call, and then what happens next? Well, there's a number of uh, ways in which uh, that can be dealt with. Uh, one is they can contact their uh, local uh, bylaw enforcement officer at the, in, their, in their local community. If they live in Vancouver, for example, they could call 311. They could also contact their, uh, their local police uh, on the non-emergency line. And they can also contact Consumer uh, Protection British Columbia. Consumer Protection BC has already received over 800 complaints. Uh, and they will be, they will be investigated. Uh, and so any one of those uh, bodies ha then has the ability to, to go out to look and to see what's taking place uh, in terms of gouging and to be able to, uh, to put in place uh, uh, a $2,000 fine. Thank you. The next question is from Gordon Hextra, Vancouver Sun. Go ahead, please. Moving on, we'll take Allison from CTV News next. Alison, are you there? And we'll wrap up with Bob Mackin from the Breaker News. Bob, are you there?
Bethlehem, Miriam Bethlehem, News 1130. Hi, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Okay, perfect. Um, we are curious about uh, any action that's being taken against the squatters in uh, Vancouver who have occupied a school, especially considering the fact that there are, um, you know, hotel rooms available for uh, the homeless population. I can tell you uh, that I have been uh, made aware of the uh, the situation at Lord Strathcona in uh, in Vancouver, and that the uh, Vancouver Police Department are uh, currently dealing with this situation, and that they will be uh, having an update uh, uh, further uh, with further information uh, later on today. The next question is from Wayne Lee, Toronto Sun, Toronto Star. Beg your pardon. Oh, hi, Minister. Um, I also have a question about the squatters at Lord Strathcona School. Um, I guess I'm just wondering what are your thoughts on arrests like this when people say they're simply trying to stay safe and follow the rules around COVID-19? Um, breaking into schools um, is, uh, uh, and occupying a school isn't exactly, in my view, a legitimate form of protest. Uh, the Vancouver police are dealing with the situation, and, uh, which is what they're supposed to be doing, and uh, they will be updating uh, the public uh, on, uh, on what exactly is happening and taking place uh, later on today. The next question is from Alexandra Sagan, CP. Hi, um, I'm just wondering if we can talk about the price gouging a little bit, just what the metric for determining whether it is price gouging or simply passing down an increased cost to consumers would be. Um, it's uh, similar to uh, legislation that's in place uh, in Ontario and Saskatchewan, for example. And, and what it is, is, is that uh, is the price of a good um, similar to the prices of goods in a, in a community or a province that uh, regular people would expect to pay uh, in comparison to, uh, to, to, to other people? And so, yes, there's a recognition that uh, you know, uh, uh, prices increase on, on goods. That's not what this is about. This is when you look at a, a product, and we've all seen examples of it, where, for example, uh, protective or safety gear uh, is, at, uh, is being charged 10 times the, uh, the normal price that you're seeing in other locations, or is being uh, sold online uh, at exorbitant uh, prices, again, over and above what you would uh, 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 expect to see uh, in a particular region or a community uh, in, uh, w for, for, for a similar product to be purchased by, by uh, regular people. Um, we've seen examples of it, uh, and it's one of those things. You know it when you see it. Thank you. Uh, we have Graham Woods, Glacier Media, next. Oh, hey, Mike. Um, what, what happens if um, supply of an item becomes so low? Uh, my question was, was similar uh, to that, but if supply of a material or item becomes so low, doesn't the price inherently increase? And, you know, how are you gauging that in terms of the, the prices being seen throughout the community? Well, that's one of the things that uh, 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 Consumer Protection BC is able to uh, is able to to determine and to monitor, along with the uh, the Retail Council of uh, British Columbia, for example. We're in regular uh, contact with our with with uh, with with our supply chains and understanding what is taking place uh, in the market. And again, what it comes down to is some common sense and understanding that when you see a mask that normally sells for you know, $5 in, in other stores is being sold for $50, or you see that it's taking place online, prices that are significantly out of line uh, for uh, what, what is being charged in, uh, in, in other locations, then you know what, then you see it, then it's, you, you know that price gouging is taking place. It's not a question of that there is a critical shortage and a, and a, and a price is rising, you know, in, in, every, in every jurisdiction, not just here in British Columbia, but right across the, but right across the country. Uh, so, so a lot of, of um, you know, ability to monitor prices um, is, 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 is in fact in place. Thank you. And our last question today goes to Alison Hertz, CTV News. Alison, go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, can you hear me this time? Yes, we can. Thank you, Alison. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, expand a little bit on the um, option for ticketing people who are um, not uh, socially distancing. I mean, we are seeing thousands of people getting warnings, and um, does that not suggest that people are actually not getting the message? This is just in one municipality in BC, and is it not time to start 
picketing when we're seeing that in other provinces right across the country that in, uh, law enforcement is taking action. Um, as I said, by and large, the, uh, the majority of people in this province are in fact following social distancing measures. Uh, and any changes uh, to the policies that we have in place, uh, which were put in place by our provincial health officer, would uh, take place uh, on her recommendations. Uh, what we're seeing in BC is the approach that's being taken is, uh, is working. We are seeing the, uh, the, con the, the, the curve uh, flatten considerably. I think that people are uh, observing the social distancing measures. There are always those uh, who think that it doesn't apply to them. As I said, many local governments have staff uh, out uh, reminding people uh, we will continue to do that. And if the uh, provincial health officer thinks that there needs to be additional measures, then obviously we would ensure that those are implemented. Thank you, and this brings us to the end of the press conference. Thank you all for joining.